So we're approaching an airport planning to do an instrument approach into the north facing runway. Only problem is we're pointed south. So how do we bang a big U-turn in the sky and be confident that we're able to stay clear of obstacles and terrain? The answer is the procedure turn. Here's the VOR Bravo approach into Front Royal Airport in Virginia. The approach includes a barb symbol here, which indicates a procedure turn should be made in order to get oriented on the final approach course of 335 degrees. The procedure turn is designed to provide aircraft with a protected zone to make a full course reversal to get situated for the final approach. The dimensions of the protected areas are based on a number of factors like airspeed and altitude, but they will look roughly like this area overlaid on the approach chart with an entry zone and a maneuvering zone. The process involves flying inbound towards the procedure turn fix, in this case the Linden VOR. Let's say here that we're approaching from the northwest. We'll overfly the VOR, follow the 155 radial outbound, then execute the procedure turn. First a 45 degree right turn to a heading at 200, then after one minute a 180 degree turn around to a heading of 020 until we intercept the final approach course. Let's have a look at our VOR and directional gyro as we fly this procedure turn. First, we're flying inbound direct to the station on a 140 heading. When we get station passage, we'll turn to the outbound heading of 155 to track the radial, and we'll set that on the VOR. To start the course reversal, we'll turn right to the 200 heading depicted on the barb. At this point, we'll time one minute and twist our VOR to the approach course 335. After the one minute, we'll make another turn to 020 degrees. This sets us up on a good intercept for the final approach course, so when the needle comes center, we'll fly that inbound. Let's also take a look at the vertical dimensions of the procedure turn. It's depicted on the approach plate profile view. Here we're starting at an assigned altitude of 6,000 feet. When we pass Linden outbound, we can start our descent down to as low as 5,000. We'll want to stay above that minimum altitude through our procedure turn to the interception of the inbound course until we cross Linden a second time, which is now the final approach fix. Now we're okay to descend to our minimum descent altitude of 3,300 feet. Let's compare this approach at Front Royal to another approach with a procedure turn, the VOR5 at Salisbury, Maryland. The only big difference between the two procedure turns is that at Front Royal, the procedure turn fix the Linden VOR is located several miles away from the airport. This allows us to use the Linden VOR as our final approach fix also. At Salisbury, the procedure turn fix is the VOR co-located right on the field. So after we make our procedure turn inbound, there is no final approach fix and things can get a little complicated and compacted on the approach course. We're allowed to give ourselves a bit more room on the approach though to compensate for this squeeze. Notice in the profile view that it says to remain within 10 nautical miles. This means that we can start our procedure turn as far out as we want as long as we don't stray 10 miles from the procedure turn fix, the Salisbury VOR. So when we fly this, we'll purposely give ourselves a bit more room by delaying that procedure turn until a little further out. Pay attention to this distance restriction anytime you're looking at procedure turns and incorporate it into your brief. Let's take a look at the different ways of executing procedure turns. We'll look at a hypothetical approach that's oriented north-south with a procedure turn. What we've been talking about so far is called the 45-180 turn, and it follows the depiction of the turn on an approach plate. It involves first flying outbound, turning 45 degrees off the outbound course, timing one minute, turning 180 degrees around, either to the left or right, depending on how far out we want to intercept, and then intercepting and flying the inbound course. This is how the turns are depicted, but that doesn't mean it's how we have to fly them. Remember that as long as we stay in the protected area, it doesn't really matter how we ultimately decide to bang that U-turn. Another method is called the 8260 turn. It involves following the outbound course, making a turn 80 degrees offset, then immediately making a turn in the opposite direction of 260 degrees. So the net effect of the two turns is a 180 degree heading change. This is the quickest and easiest way to do an about face in your airplane. 
I've actually used this in other areas like changing my direction on downwind and the traffic pattern for this reason. It has an advantage of quickness in reversing course. However, its major drawback is that if there's any crosswind, it'll push us to one side or other of the final approach course, making it more difficult to intercept. Here's an approach with another form of procedure turn, and it's actually a lot more common now than the traditional barb type turn. This is the RNAV 5 at the same airport, Salisbury. The initial approach fix, FACO, has a racetrack pattern in a solid, bold line, which is called a hold in lieu of procedure turn. It's a fancy name, which means it looks like a holding pattern, but functions also as a procedure turn. And don't get this symbol confused with the symbol for the missed approach hold. Here, the holding fix is at a koye, which is distinguished by a dashed racetrack, not the solid, bold racetrack of the hold in lieu of. Since this is a GPS approach, let's see how we'll fly it using the Garmin 650. To start with, we're approaching from the west, and our last instruction was to proceed direct to Salisbury Airport. Now, let's say ATC tells us, turn right direct FACO, cleared for the RNAV GPS runway 5, Salisbury. Let's load and activate the approach. From this nav screen, we'll hit back, proc, approach, approach again next to KSBY, select the RNAV GPS 5. For transition, we'll do FACO since that's where we've been cleared to, and we'll hit load approach and activate and we'll hit back and default nav will bring us back to this screen. The desired track to FACO is now 210, so we'll make a right turn towards that following the pink CDI needle at the bottom of the unit. And we'll stay on this track as we approach FACO, which is where we'll start the entry to the hold in lieu of procedure. The GPS will tell us that the best hold entry from our position is the teardrop, so we'll plan that. Then it'll count us down to our turn for the teardrop entry a left to 200. We'll hold this until the unit counts us down again to our inbound turn of 048 degrees. As we make that turn, notice the pink CDI needle will start to swing towards center as we pick up the inbound course. After we pass FACO the second time, we'll continue inbound on the approach. Now the hold in lieu of can also function as a holding procedure. If there's a delay at the airport, like a runway closure, or the guy before you forgot to close his flight plan or something, ATC can hold you here until it's okay to clear you for the approach. You'll hear something like, hold southwest of FACO as published and expect further clearance in five minutes. So we'll first make our same entry to the hold in lieu of, but this time, since we're not yet clear for the approach, but instead need to hold at FACO, we'll suspend the approach by hitting SUSP in the bottom right. Notice then, too, the pink letters SUSP on the bottom of the display. We've told the unit that we won't be continuing on the approach after FACO, and it'll have us stay in the hold indefinitely. So now it looks very much like a traditional hold. Approaching FACO, it'll have us turn outbound to 229. So while we're outbound, we get the green light from ATC who says, cross FACO at 2000, cleared for the RNAV GPS 5 into Salisbury. We can now unsuspend the approach with the same button. And now when we cross FACO, it'll have us continue inbound. One last thought. Whenever a procedure turn is depicted and there's no restriction that applies, you're required to perform the procedure turn, just as we have in these examples. However, in this GPS age where precise turn anticipation is pretty widespread, the controllers are usually not expecting you to perform the procedure turn, even though it's technically required. Because of this, especially in the general aviation world, I recommend coordinating with ATC first if you're gonna plan on doing the procedure turns. Just a quick heads up that that's what your intentions are. I know it's odd, but it's just one of those things. At least now you know you're a pro at doing them. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.